Hello and welcome to this week's edition of News in Depth. Today on the program we take you on a ride to women empowerment in Katete and Lundazi districts where various women have been imparted with various skills such as village banking and modern agriculture techniques. After undergoing these trainings, some women have been able to quadruple their incomes. I'm your host, Masauso Mukwayaya. Join me as I showcase some of these success stories. Stay tuned. A drive to the eastern province of Zambia in the rainy season is revitalizing. This is because most sections of the greatest road is sandwiched by a graceful patch of a lush green landscape littered with grass thatched houses. The refreshing scenery gives way to a horizon of rolling hills. The stunning countryside can easily cloud one's view of the many challenges that people in the province are faced with. According to the Central Statistical Office, CSO, Eastern Province had an estimated 340,000 households in 2015. The CSO Living Condition Survey of 2015 say about 300,000 households are small-scale farmers with an average monthly income of 693 kwacha. This means that about 90% of the households in the province live on a 23 kwacha per day. The Central Statistical Office defines poverty by a household's capability to secure a basic food basket that meets minimum nutritional requirements for a family of six. And the Jesuit Center for Theological Reflections, JCTR, pegged the December 2018 food basket for a family of five in Eastern Province at 2,860 kwacha. With 90% of households in Eastern Province living on an average monthly income of 693 kwacha, it means majority are officially living under the poverty line as determined by the CSO. Nonetheless, domestic life here is simple and peaceful. In Lundazi district, children gracefully play a traditional game called Chiato. Most of them are unaware of the poverty statistics in the province. They seem peaceful but oblivious of the future. A few meters away, at a government school, some of their parents and other elders in the village gather to knit ideas into plans that would improve people's livelihoods in the village. Uh, SNV is implementing a project uh, in Lundazi and Katete, which is uh, called Assumes, uh, those, those economies. In the first called uh, uh, Sustainable Integrated Land Management Solutions. Now this project uh, came to answer challenges which farmers are facing. Uh, that's in Lundazi and uh, Katete. Uh, namely, depleted soils. The soils in these two six are depleted. Uh, secondly, deforestation, where people want to think that for you to improve productivity, you have to go and cut more trees and expand your fields. The locals have been brought together by one of Zambia's cooperating partners, the Netherlands Development Organization, SNV. In this part of Eastern Province, SNV has been working on projects aimed at improving the welfare of the people in Lundazi and Katete districts. The groups that are mostly centered on women have been engaged in training programs where they are being imparted with modern agriculture techniques, village banking skills and gender matters. SNV say they felt the need to engage stakeholders in rolling out life uplifting interventions in the two districts following challenges that the people in the two areas are faced with. So the core uh, function of the ministry is to actually provide extension services. Uh, but we believe that, uh, you know, currently the government alone uh, cannot uh, provide what is required uh, for the officers to provide extension services. So on board, uh, we are collaborating with uh, SNV. And then SNV uh, is actually a key partner in the sense that it is actually helping us uh, maybe to actually uh, bridge up the gap in terms of uh, what we are lacking uh, in terms of the resources uh, as well as the, the, the technical training uh, which is being provided to uh, our officers. Here in Lundazi, 90% of the households have been small-scale farmers for many years. However, 
most of them have been unable to graduate to the next level of the trade. This has largely been linked to the insistence by farmers to use old agriculture methods where entire portions of farming areas are tilled and in other cases seed is continually recycled from one season to the other. Under such archaic practices, farmers are only able to get yields of about 15, 50 kg bags of maize from a hectare. There is a low productivity. No matter how much farmers put in, because of the method they are using for their farming, the productivity keeps on going down. So we came to address those challenges of uh, depleted soils, raw productivity and also deforestation. In Mapala village, about 10 kilometers from Lundazi Central Business District, a group of women gather for a weekly community meeting. Most of them are barefoot and their feet tell a story of hard work. However, the hard work they put in does not tally with the yields they get. This is largely because of the conventional mode of agriculture that they practice. Leah Piri, a small-scale farmer, has used this mode of farming for years and she shares the difficulties. In the past, we have been practicing agriculture using old tradition methods, and in most cases, crops would die, especially during dry spells. But now, SNV has trained us in conservation farming, and the difference in crop yields is huge. So, demo, to remedy the situation, farmers are now being trained in conservation farming. Conservation agriculture is a set of three systems practiced in unison, where emphasis is on minimum physical soil disturbance, permanent soil cover with some form of plant residue, and crop rotation. Our approach is that we are using what is called the uh, farmer field schools, uh, the demonstration plots, whereby we have uh, 155 lead farmers scattered in the four camps uh, here in Lundazi. And then uh, these uh, lead farmers, each one of them has got a minimum of 45 flower farmers. Uh, these lead farmers got a field where they train the flower farmers on how to do uh, improved uh, uh, farming methods, that is uh, methods which, which are be able to mitigate the effects of climate change. Yeah, so the lead farmers, once they, practice, they demonstrate on their fields what is being done, the flower farmers now go to their fields and then do what they have learned yeah, through their flower farmers. So in the approach, there's what we are calling the ISFM, Integrated Soil Fertility Management, whereby farmers are being taught how to manage their soils, uh, that is uh, minimum tillage, they don't have to do the ridges for their farming, they have to do minimum tillage and also they have to uh, plant improved uh, uh, seeds. They have to possibly use herbicides as opposed to weeding using their, their hoes. That way the soils are disturbed. We also have a component of agroforestry whereby we're integrating the trees and the plants together, I mean the crops, so that at the end of the day, the soils are actually improved, crop rotation, uh, keeping residue in the land. That way uh, the flower farmers have seen that uh, the, the, the fields are doing better, the crops are improving. We don't need to expand uh, more land for them to improve the productivity. In the same piece of land, if they apply their fertilizers correctly, they plant early, uh, use improved seed, they're able to uh, improve uh, their yields. Leah's realization of the effectiveness of conservation farming came into sharp focus when a maize field that she had cultivated under this method survived a severe dry spell. Following her successful experience, Leah adopted the tenacity exhibited by ants to reach out to farmers on the need to adopt modern agriculture techniques. When I was trained in conservation farming by SNV, I tried to convince my husband for us to use the new method, but he was adamant. I then decided to plant maize on a small portion of our field. When we experienced a dry spill, the maize planted by my husband under the old method didn't grow well, but mine survived. The difference between conservation farming and conventional agriculture is huge. I am now able to invest about 50 bags of maize compared to then, when I would only get about 15 bags. Leah confirms that conservation farming has boosted her yields. Difference is 
The difference between conservation farming and conventional agriculture is huge. I am now able to harvest about 50 bags of maize compared to then when I would only get about 15 bags. Despite this success, farmers here are still faced with a major challenge. For conservation farming to take off effectively, the use of certified seed is highly recommended. But certified seed in Ondazi was until now only found in the central business district, making it difficult for farmers staying in the outskirts of the district to access the commodity. This necessitated the introduction of a training program to equip farmers with a set of skills to grow crops that would be used to provide the surrounding community with high-grade certified seeds. Elita Mukandawire is one of the people who has been trained as a seed multiplier. Riding on the gender principles that she has received from her several holistic trainings, Elita has incorporated her husband, David Piri, in the seed multiplier venture. The two have decided to dedicate time to work together to sort out the scarcity of quality seed in the area. In 2017, we started in 2017 and we planted 8 kg of groundnuts. We managed to sell to farmers in our community and realized some good profit. The couple indicated that the venture is lucrative. This season, we managed to harvest 7 to 50 kg bags of groundnuts and 50 pockets of 50 kg bags. Mr. and Mrs. Piri specialize in groundnut seed, which they partly grow at a field just behind their house. Nuts grown for seed, unlike for consumption, need an extra dose of care. Perhaps this is why Mr. and Mrs. Piri make time to always tender their legumes. The thought of how to sustain the venture is a mind spinning question for the couple. The Piris and many other families in Lundazi and beyond struggle to access finances to invest in different economic activities. Arising from that, a community-based financial concept called Village Banking was introduced to the community groups here. Village Banking is a banking system that is implemented in economically challenged environments in order to help those that cannot get loans from traditional financial institutions. Savings groups are helping us a lot. For instance, when the money is shared out, others are using it to buy fertilizer and to help out with the children's school fees and other home needs. The concept is realized by creating a group of not more than 25 members who come together and formulate operating terms and conditions. They agree on how much each member should contribute and for how long. The contribution also includes a social fund, which is used for logistics and contingency to sort out unforeseen needs. The money which is loaned out to members after a specified period is kept in a metal box. For transparency purposes, the box is always secured by three locks, with the keys kept by three different people, hence making it difficult for any one of the key holders to open the box in the absence of others. So the rest banking concept is thereby to help our farmers to start keeping their sources together. They keep their money together in a box, uh, they are trying to do that, that arrangement and then they start giving each other loans. Then at the end of the cycle, which could be six months or uh, one year or so, they're able to share that money and then able to go and buy the inputs such as fertilizer, improved seed. They're also able to pay for uh, things like soil testing services and also buy herbicides for them to be able to uh, deal with their weeds uh, in their fields. The loans acquired from this undertaking have empowered people to venture into various economic activities. Chiseba Mwelo is one of the members of this savings group in Lundazi has managed to set up a butchery using a loan acquired from the village bank. 
Her business has enabled me to educate all my children, even my household is doing well because of the same butchery business. To my children, even my household is doing well because of the same butchery business. For Alice Nirenda, she used the loan she acquired from the bank to build herself a house worth about 10,000 kwacha. Belonging to a savings group is very beneficial. I have even managed to use the money I got to build a house. Rachel Chunga invested the loan she got in a grocery shop. I joined the savings group in 2016. We started out with saving five kwacha. As we went on, we increased the contributions. When the money accumulated, we shared out and I used my share to start a grocery. And Hedman Temba is happy that his subjects are now imparted with skills and services that are improving their lives. I think when to Gavan, Punzira opens Ramagora Chomeni, one where Tramo Pinduri Kuruchomeni, Kringana and Kanganja SNV, a band who my people are benefiting from the SNV training. For instance, conservation farming is increasing their yields. Two hundred and sixty five kilometers southwest of Lundazi district, another village banking meeting is taking place in Katete district. This is the Chimwemwe Savings Club. Before the meeting starts, members of the club take time to introduce themselves in a musical way. The documentary crew was also asked to join the introduction activity. <laughs> Chimwema Savings Groups, like many other groups seen in Lundazi, is mostly made up of elderly women and men. Perhaps this is why it was easy to spot out Misha Kingoma, a 19-year-old boy, the youngest member of the group. Mishek joined the savings group to save money for school and other home necessities. He is a grade 11 pupil at Jesse Day Secondary School, located just a few kilometers from where the savings meeting was taking place. <laughs> Tukatenga ndrama zija, ni mapeze uti, ni maso vera kuma problem zina unga meninga peze kena aze mnyamari. When I get my share from the group, I use the money to pay for school fees and to sort out other needs at home. Waza peze uti kuskulu wati pisha ndrama ndrama, tatenga kuja meni tatenga, tapede kakuja, so that po fika teme uti kuja kuskulu, wati pisha futi, nishi na mapisu eksi, tashitako, tapede kakuti, kuja wame ni natenga. Mishek works old jobs to make income to save. Her times has to double work and school, but it gets really busy in the rainy season when people are about to start planting. In times in on times all year, man. So, munga pa weekend or all year or so, nzo funiko enda kupisweki, ni pangi pisweki, ni pezindra maoti, po endo se gurira, ni kareko na kangono, kauti ni kapeleke kuche. Chimwema Savings Group chairperson Stanford Lukopa has also challenged young people going through challenges to consider joining the savings group. I'm urging young people to join savings group in order to uplift their livelihoods. Mr. Lukopa says the savings group is playing a part in uplifting people's livelihoods. 
He says people are now able to access fertilizer and other implements using funds from the group. Vena, wachoka ko nditu na ma 1,500 kulingana na mwamine when we share out, others get 1,500, depending on how much one contributed. And Katete District Agriculture Coordinator, James Ngalamila, hinted that such interventions are contributing to increase crop yields in the district. The objective is to assist the small-scale farmers increase their production and productivity. By so doing, we are able to address issues of food security both at a household level because we believe that if the farmers are able to produce enough beyond their consumption, meaning that the surplus will actually go uh, for sale. So meaning that they are actually bringing income uh, at their household level. Mwinga Hamwene is an agriculture agent at Impangwe Camp in Katete. She has also noted improvements. In most cases, like in my camp, a lot of farmers are appreciating these skills because it has improved their, their productivity, as I've said. And looking at their, also their income sources, it has gone high because there is even the diversification parts where we're not just looking at maize. We also do legumes and cotton, of which in, in terms of legumes there is a lot of money. Ms. Angalamila has held stakeholders such as SNV for the skills that they have extended to farmers in Katete. Through uh, SNV and then uh, our agriculture extension officers, uh, you know uh, the number of ag agronomic practices that we are actually promoting, uh, such as climate smart agriculture. Because we believe that if farmers actually adopt that, uh, they will be able to uh, sustain their uh, production as well as uh, maybe uh, seeing to it that there is an increase in, uh, in production. Uh, coupled with that, I think we believe that uh, as at now, I think it's all, it's countrywide, as well as worldwide, you know, the effects of climate change. So by farmers taking up these good agronomic practices, we are seeing that at least uh, they are able to mitigate uh, the impacts of climate change. Thereby, we are even seeing uh, those who are adopting at least increasing their productivity as compared to those who are not really adopting. Mia Mumbewe, one of the members of Chimwema Savings Group, has managed to grow her chicken rearing business using funds from the community savings group. She usually rears 200 chickens, where she makes a profit of about 3,000 kwacha every month. I got to 1,250 Kutizi kule, zifike pati ni amboguli sapa six weeks. Ni maa unuonga ndra mwenye kwa ni ya... I use about 4,800 kwacha to grow the chickens until they are ready for sale. When I sell all the 200 chickens, I make about 800,000 kwacha. It's quite profitable. Kuma ubuino ulimo, ndawa ndra mazisungika. Nga titachita six months hija, tutasevinga. Nga ine, nga ili malamula muja, nga mbo titi zisevinga 50 kwacha bwela pansi. So tika sevinga 50 kwacha bwela pansi. Tima chitabu anji, ni maka ndra maija sevingi, paminyezi 6 hija mwina 600. Plus, in Joe Kongola, we have a lot of money. We have a lot of money. We have a lot of 1.4. Sustainability should be emphasized if these activities are to translate into long-term economic development. This is where we come to the end of this week's edition of News in Depth, where we took you on a ride to women empowerment in Katete and Lundazi districts, where women in Lundazi and Katete district have been imparted in skills such as village banking and modern agriculture techniques that have been able to quadruple earnings for some of these women. I've been your host, Masauso Mukwayaya. Thank you so much for watching. Please and viewing.